Alright, this is the video review for the Transformers Predacons Rising uh, Beast Hunter Skylinks. Now, if you, I know some people have some issue with the name, and I get that. Uh, if, if, you, if it's that big of a deal for you, you can always get the Skystalker figure, which is the same mold as this, just in a, like a light blue and like a lighter blue, different shades of light blue. I said that way too weird, but whatever. Um, so yeah, um, this is a Target exclusive. Um, I picked it up. It wasn't one I had planned on picking up. I didn't have a version of this mold previously. And then, uh, and I like the colors on this. I do like the, the kind of maroon and white and the dark blue with the gold discs. It looks really nice. Um, and some gold highlights around, or copperish highlights, I guess, around the body. But then the other day, I checked out at Target, and uh, when, you know, you know, sometimes when you get the receipt at Target, it'll print the receipt, and then it'll print one of those little coupons. Um, the coupon it printed for me was a three dollar off any Predacons Rising figure. And uh, he was the one I was most interested in. I already had, I already had the Grimwing mold, so I didn't need Dark Steel. And already, I've already done the big Predaking and like the giant Optimus. Like I'm like, even with three dollars off, it's not worth it. That thing looks like a giant pile of mess. So, uh, so I got this guy. He was one of the ones I was interested in having anyway. And with three dollars off, and then I went in, and they were on sale at Target. So they were on sale, and then I got three dollars off of that. So worth it. Like, I, I think he's worth retail price. He's a fun little mold, um, especially if you don't already have Skystalker. I think of the two, I like his colors better. Um, but ultimately, like, you know, the, the mold itself is neat. It's not perfect. It's not the best mold to come out of the Predacons Rising Beast Hunters line. But it's a fun little mold. And you see he's kind of a, he's a little dragon. And actually, you know, he's got the four legs and the wings and kind of crouched down. I love his head. I actually, I do love his beast mode head. His robot mode head is a little bleh, but his beast mode head is neat. I do like how his robot mode head kind of forms, like, the, the he's got these little things right here. It looks like he could have, like, some little fire launchers in his mouth from his robot mode head. Uh, but we'll get to that a little later on. He does actually still have a waist swivel uh, from Transformation, which is kind of neat to see a waist swivel in beast mode. And he does have these launchers in his wings, and basically you just pull up on these white pieces... And I'm not doing it fast enough. My fingers are a little too big to really pop it. But it didn't really launch the disc out of his wing. It's just a little, just a little friction launcher there in his wings. And and the the upper part is independently jointed from the the lower white part, so you can swing it all the way around to the front if need be. So yeah, transformation is is pretty basic as, as you might expect from a figure of this size and design. Uh, you just although within there are a couple of neat little things. You pull the tail up. I'm just gonna get that out of the way here. And we'll eventually set that up against his back. And then the hips here, you can see it collapse together like that. The legs you just bring down and extend them. There's a little heel piece that flips out. If you get the if you get the legs right, that piece should work as a foot. Uh, the positioning him is a little weird because he has the kind of chicken leg configuration. So it, it takes a while to get the right pose for him in bot mode. But if you do it right, that heel will help support him in bot mode. It's just a matter of getting all the weight distributed properly, which can be a little bit difficult. Um, and then you take the arms, you can see there's a slot here on the wings, and the wings can rotate up and down like this. And then you, and what you want to do is line that slot up and push this up in, into, the, into that slot, and then you take this whole wing assembly and then slide it even further down. So that, that if you do it right, that peg ends up coming right out of the center of the wing. You can see now that it's right... And it's in the wing. So once you, if you do it right, you're still able to uh, to rotate it because now it's just rotating around the pivot point where the shoulder is, uh, which is neat. So again, push that up because, like I said, if you get if you don't if you don't do it right, you're going to end up pushing. You know, this this will end up sitting in the pivot point, and you can't do it. But if you push it, everything snaps together. You'll know you've got it right when you can freely move the uh, wing around that that post without any resistance or any any risk of damage. The hands, you rotate this around, flip his hand around. You actually want to rotate this upside down and up around to the into the shoulder, and it just kind of sits there like some back of the arm greeble as his hand flips out. And same over here. Kind of flip it so that ball joint sits right up in there. And there's the arm, and then the head. You have to kind of. Hunch, you, 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 just, you bring this down as well as hunch the whole body, upper body over. And then uh, his neck kind of comes down and you can see how it compresses into the body like that. And then the jaw opens up 
and then the head flips down, and then this chest panel comes up. His, his lower beast jaw kind of sits inside the chest. Um, he does have a neck swivel, so you can actually still turn his head from side to side. But you sink that down in there, and then you just rest the tail up against his back. And after that, it's just a matter of weight distribution. Um, you, you can certainly bro pull the launchers up. Having the launchers facing forward makes it a lot easier. Uh, with the launchers facing forward, a lot of the weight goes onto his toes, and he's not nearly as back heavy. Um, so you can do that. Um, but I, I don't like how the, the launchers look facing straight forward. Because uh, one, you have to, they won't face straight forward unless you bring the wings out. And I like the way the wings come out, but I, I'm just not a big fan of how the launchers face straight up over his body. I do like, you can fold these down... He said, I, I do like the colors. You can find some balance if you use those heel pieces properly. Again, like I was mentioning, you just got to find the right balance point. You can have the wings sitting back a little bit, and that looks okay. Uh, the way I generally do it is I bring the wings down like this. It kind of gives them like a little bit of a trench-coated look. Um, you can position those off the side. But uh, when you have them like that, it kind of centers the weight, and you can get a lot more stable poses out of them. It's not the most dynamic position for the wings, but it doesn't look bad. It gives a little bit of bulk to his robot mode, so he doesn't look quite as lanky and skinny and, and emaciated. Um, and like I said, once you get it done, it uh, makes him pretty solid. It doesn't look super bad from the side either. It, it, lo it looks like he could be wearing like a like one of those sleeveless cloaks, I guess. He, lo I mean, he looks like he'd be a wizard or something. Spellcaster type class. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all personal preference. Like the instructions show, show him with his wings up and out. And, and there's some neat poses you can get with that, too. That's just my preferred method of, of balancing the weight and getting some actual pretty decent uh, posability out of him without worrying about him toppling over. So, but yeah, there he is. Uh, he's a, a Target exclusive, uh, but there is Predacon Skylinks. He doesn't look anything like he did in the show. If you watch the movie on, on Friday night, um, he's actually much bulkier. He may even be bigger than Darksteel in, in the cartoon. I would love to get a show-accurate Skylinks out of him, because I thought his design was really awesome in, in the movie itself. Um, and this is not not it. But uh, but it's not a bad figure for, uh, especially if you can get it on sale and with a coupon. But yeah, there it is, uh, Predacon Rising Skylinks.